Police officers of Reddit, who's the smartest criminal you've ever encountered? Most of them are really stupid so this guy isn't a criminal mastermind but here goes. He wanted to rob a jewelers on our city's main street. So he found out the flat beside the jewelers was empty and he hid there. For two weeks he triggered the alarm on purpose several times a night, massive headache for the police and the business, we turned up to see nothing there, nothing on cameras, thought it was just a fluke so the jewelers turned off the alarm system and said they'd wait until the morning to get a new one installed or that one rewired because something wasn't right. As soon as he heard that and the police leaving he tore down the wall, had already been working on this apparently, and robbed the place taking a sweet time. Escaped without anyone noticing anything for hours, until the jewelers came back in the morning. Then he tried to resell something he stole which had a serial number on it and got caught. So not that smart after all. Good effort though. Next story. A friend of my brother moved to Israel where for a period of time it was slash is acceptable to drive with an American driver's license. He was pulled over for speeding, and when asked for his license, gave the officer his Costco card. Costco is a membership-based retail warehouse in the US and a few other countries. The exchange apparently went something like this, Officer, Costco? What is Costco? Friend, it's the state I'm from. Officer, that sounds made up. Friend, there are lots of states you probably haven't heard of. Have you heard of Arkansas? How about Idaho? Officer, I guess not. Friend, well I'm from the small state of Costco. The officer didn't have a response and wound up writing the ticket to someone with a Costco driver's license. Friend framed the ticket and still has it hanging on his wall. Next story. Well, there was this one guy, we'll call him Jack. Now, Jack stole stuff but also involved a lot of people. One time, he was planning to steal a whole bunch of cars, all luxury cars. So what he did, was he got his people to call 911, etc., from all different places, and countries, to tell them that car theft was taking place in multiple places. Oh, he also only used a few people each time, so it was different voices, people, locations, etc. So the police went each time, until he actually did the crime, then no one came. He was never caught. When the owner of those cars came, the police didn't believe him. 10 tenths genius right there. Next story. The story goes like this, a homeowner walks out one morning to drive to work only to find his car missing. He reports the car stolen to police. A few days later, his car is sitting back in front of his house. When he gets inside he finds a note. It was an apology that said the thief was in dire need of quick transportation and so he borrowed the first car he found with the keys inside. The writer noticed the sticker on the car for the local sports team, and just so there were no hard feelings, he left four tickets to an upcoming game in the glove box for the homeowner and his family. So the homeowner and his family attend the game, but when they return home they find the house has been ransacked and all items of value are gone. Next story. There was a guy with over 50 speeding charges, with the name Prawajazdi. He was in a different car, with a different disguise every single time. Eventually, after the government set up a special task force to take down this guy, they realized that Prawojazdi means driver's license in Polish. Clarification, it was 50 different people, the police just wrote down their name as Prawojazdi every time someone with a Polish driver's license was caught speeding. Next story. There's a small tourist town where I grew up that is divided in half by a big river, the only way between the two sides is over a long bridge, unless you go all the way around another mountain pass. These guys called in, like, two to three bomb threats to a posh hotel on one side of the bridge, I think they even left some dummy packages. All the police went across the bridge to do crowd control, etc, etc. The guys then called in a bomb threat on the bridge. And started robbing stuff on the other side. The police couldn't be positive the bomb threat was real or not and hesitated long enough to give the thieves a head start. I first heard this story about 10 years ago, in Banff, Alberta. Never bothered to look up what was real versus what is invented. I think this is pretty close. But as my father used to say, you can't let truth get in the way of a good story. Next story. Here's one. I knew this guy back in the early 80s, let's call him Jim. Well he really wanted this high-powered superbike but he knew he could never afford it, so what he did was to take drive to London and scouted about for a few days until he found that particular model parked outside a house. He goes back that night with a slide hammer, pulls the lock, and steals the bike. He gets it home, puts it in his garage and completely strips it so that the only thing left is the frame and the bottom half of the engine, which he drags into the weeds at the bottom of his garden, then he pours fuel over it and burns it a bit. A few weeks pass and weeds have started growing over it. It's at that point he calls the cops and reports that someone had dumped a bike frame in his garden. The cops show up and he explains that he just got back from being away and found it. The cops take the frame and note down high name and address. A few days later, the cops call him and say that the bike had been stolen from London a month or so ago, from the serial number on the bottom half of the engine and frame, and that the insurance company had classed the bike as a write-off, and had told the cops to dispose of it. Now, Because the frame was found in his garden and the insurance company didn't want it, the cops were duty-bound to ask him if he wanted to keep it, or if they should throw it. So he tells them that he'd always wanted to build a bike, he gets the fame back from them, repaints it, then puts it all back together and re-registers it as a Q Reg, stolen and recovered. I forgot to call him Jim didn't I? Edit. To all the people asking if I'm Jim, no, I'm not. I knew him well though, 
we went to school together and he lived a few doors down from me. I had my own group of friends and occasionally went out at the pub, we would bump into him and he'd tell us of his exploits without a care in the world. As far as that bike goes, he proudly told a few people about it, but you know, we don't grass, he crashed the bike a few months later and was injured but I can't remember how. He was pretty much a career criminal the last time I saw him, and ended up in jail for a while. While many regard him as scum, I always felt bad for him. Both his parents died before he was 12 and he was in and out of care homes for years. Out of his four brothers, one was murdered, the other died of an asthma attack, and another committed suicide. He could never hold down a job and also suffered from depression. The bloke had a crap life. It's been more than 25 years since I saw him last and I often wonder how he's doing. Next story. Working in a home improvement store when younger. This guy came in, went to the snow blowers, took one and went to the return desk. Said he wanted to return it but had no receipt. They told him you need a receipt so he says okay I'll be back and wheels it off to car through the front door. He did this a few times apparently. Couple places even helped him load it back into his car. Next story. Obligatory not a cop, but. Close on 20 years ago now a guy on Australia's Gold Coast got away with a bank robbery in broad daylight. He cased the bank for a while and discovered a pattern of the bank manager arriving about 30 minutes before anyone else each morning where he would leave the front doors unlocked so staff could help themselves in without a key or needing to wait for the boss to come and let them in. One morning the crook dressed himself up for a busy day of office work and waited for the bank manager to arrive. As the manager was unlocking the doors he made his move, entering the building and threatening the manager with a gun. He got all the details he'd need to access the vault and so forth and then tied the manager up and stuffed him in his office. When the staff arrived he told them that the manager had called in sick and that regional office had sent him in to do the open shop thing and no one batted an eyelid. This bank had a small walk-in vault that normally only held about 30-50k on any given day but old mate had timed his robbery for the morning after business banking day when all the local small businesses would make their end of week deposits and reportedly got a score of close to 250k. Once the vault was open he pulled his gun out and invited all the staff to enter the vault and lock them in. By this stage the bank was due to be open so when he went to leave there were a number of customers waiting to get inside to do their banking. He told them all that there had been an issue with the computers and that the tech team had estimated it would take about 30 minutes before the issue would be resolved and that they couldn't open until then. Then he got into his car and drove straight to the airport and flew to Hong Kong and then disappeared. To my knowledge the cops never caught him and never managed to find the money, they knew he'd have had to leave most of it in Australia somewhere because you can only take 10k odd in cash in any currency out of the country before customs pulls you into their interview room so the assumption was that he had to have an accomplice here who would funnel the money to him slowly over time.